helps if you turn on your microphone. All right, guys, here we have a something or other 2010 plus club car precedent. I don't know what year this thing is because the owner of this cart has rhino lined or plasti dipped or raptor lined pretty much everything on this cart short of the headlights <laughs> and the windshield. So I don't know what year it is, but anyway, this is an electric cart. This one here has a problem where it doesn't do anything. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go through a diagnostic procedure with you guys. I'll show you what I do as far as how to determine what a potential cause could be uh, and take it from there. Oh, look at it. It's a Tesla cart. I gotta say, it is great to be back. I'm hoping this year is gonna be better than last year. I know they didn't pump out a lot of videos last year, you know, with everything going on, with the crap happening. Uh, this is middle of April, 2021. I'm hoping to start seeing some regular work coming into the shop where we can start pumping out some regular videos. I know I've had a bunch of carts in here already. Uh, none of them were really film worthy. They were just traditional, normal routine services, in and out kind of thing. And I had to get them in and out quick. So I wasn't able to really stop and film a lot of it. But we're gonna do this one here and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. All right, so you guys can see we have a 48 volt battery bank, six eight volt batteries. These are Trojan Motive batteries. I don't know what size they are. The freaking cover's in the way. Um, but as you can see, we have a plethora of rat's nest and wires. Uh, I should say a rat's nest of wires. We have over here a whole bunch of stuff going on. Looks like he's got a autofill system. I don't think these things are worth their weight in poop, so who knows. I'm not a fan of them. Not crazy about these autofill systems. I think they're kind of whatever. Some of them work, some of them don't, so it's really just not worth it to me. Um, I see a bunch of, a lot of corrosion on this battery here. You can see how that terminal is really, really loose. So, I mean, that might be a potential culprit. Uh, what I like to do is I like to go around to each battery cable or battery terminal and post and just wiggle it. Like, see, this one here is a little funky, if you, if you will, I guess. So you got that one there. That one's okay, but it's whatever. Got that one there, that one's okay. And then here's the main positive or negative. I don't even know what is this. The neg oh, this is the negative. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So that could be a potential issue. This, I'm going to replace this with a stainless steel nut, a 9 16th nut. That shouldn't be some generic old stuff. And we are in run mode. Um, this here is a potential failure point. So that is something that we're going to have to address. Regardless, any of these ends that are weak, we're going to snip off and like this one here, we're going to snip this off and redo that. Everything else though seems to be in order and pretty tight. Uh, the customer also wants me to kind of go through and figure out this wiring mess. So that ought to be fun. I don't advise people taking two eight volt batteries or one eight volt battery and connecting it to your light kit or any other accessories because you are running 16 volts. Uh, but if you take the actual open circuit voltage of a battery, these are closer to like 8.8 .8 to nine volts when they're fully charged. So you got almost 18 to 20 volts here, potentially going through a 12 volt circuit. And you could cause a lot of issues. Like you get a wire that overheats under here. And if you have it routed in a place that could be touching another wire that's connected to say the controller or one of the, M core underneath the floor or the, the ignition circuit or whatever, whatever it's touching. If it's touching a wire that's related to the cart's electrical system, you could potentially, potentially now, not saying that it would, but you could potentially one, start a fire or two, kill your controller. You could kill the M core and the controller. And now you're in a real world of hurt. Now you basically have to <laughs> rebuild and rewire the whole cart and repair any damaged wires. So it's, I never advise this. It all comes down to safety. It all comes down to protecting your investment. Okay, these batteries are very expensive. So first thing I wanna do now is, all right, after, sorry about that spiel, but anyway, you need to know that. That's the kind of stuff that I look out for with stuff like this. So we're gonna figure out a, a solution for our customer after we get the cart moving. So 
Now that we've gone through, we've played with all the wires, everything seems to be up to par, kinda. We have one problem here, one problem here, and then a potential, this one's just loose. It's not broken, but it's loose. Like the, it's really thin metal, so we might just change that anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is grab a voltmeter and we're gonna test our pack voltage, and then we're gonna test each battery voltage and see where we're at with that. So we got a voltmeter here. I'm gonna try to do this one handed. I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're gonna start here. I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna start over here at our first battery. And we have 0.759 volts. Okay, well that's a problem. Actually, we have <laughs> negative 0.761 volts. So negative half a volt. So that battery is actually reverse polarity in itself, which happens. Um, I'm gonna have to look for a serial number off of these batteries and check them out. All right, battery two. We are negative, positive. We are negative almost two volts. All right, so these batteries have been sitting discharged for a long time. Somebody has done something wrong somewhere, or there's another problem. Let's see, I bet you these batteries are shot. All right, so battery number three, you can see it's negative 1.3 volts. I'm just gonna round up. I'm on the positive terminal in case you're wondering, positive. I'm putting the red terminal. Oop, sorry, kind of not paying attention to the camera here. Positive and negative. You can see negative 1.3 volts. Okay, this one is actually 7.43 volts. So 7.4 volts in that one. So that one is severely discharged. These three over here are dead, but we are gonna try. We're gonna try to bring them back. I doubt it, but we're gonna try it anyway. All right, so battery number five, seven and three, seven and a half volts, just rounding up, positive seven and a half volts. And now I'm gonna go over here to battery number six. So that's why the cart's not moving. We don't have a full, whoop, full 48 volt pack here. And we're at seven and a half volts again. At least we're positive. All right, so. This half of the battery pack is dead, technically, but it's okay. These three batteries over here are toast. So what we're gonna have to do, and I, this is gonna be down to all this electrical crap. Look at, see, we got, we got this thing hooked up to 24 volts, this circuit here, whatever this is, this looks like a light kit. That's hooked up to 24 volts. Now, if it's a 24 volt light, that's fine. That's not gonna really hurt anything. That's like hooking up two 12 volt batteries. That ain't gonna bother it. But if it's a 12 volt light, well, hmm, kind of cooking it. Here's our charger circuit. Oh, you painted these wires. No wonder why everything looks so weird. All right, so this is, a, I'm gonna assume a lighting circuit. There's a fuse in there. It's probably a 10 amp because I see red. Okay. Here is a chart. This is the positive charge. Negative charge comes through the onboard computer, which is down here. Um, here's our Accessory positive, 48 volt accessory positive, main positive, and then I don't know what this crap is. There's some other stuff tied in with this. So what am I gonna do with this pack? Actually, you know what? Let's see what our, I'm gonna turn this back on right quick because you know what I wanna see? I'm gonna turn the light on here so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna set this to DC, it's auto range by the way. I'm gonna go between battery one and battery three. Let's see what our total voltage is per this pack. Now that I know that we have a dead pack here. Look at negative four volts almost. Negative four volts. So these batteries are not only severely, deeply discharged, they are reverse polarity. Polarity, reverse polarity. Uh, if you ever wanna check your pack voltage, you could just stick your voltmeter down in here. I got it backwards, probably. I don't think it matters. So negative, or I'm sorry, 18 and a quarter volt volts in the entire pack. So that is why the cart's not moving. Uh, we're gonna put this thing in tow mode because what, the next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take apart all of the cart's battery cables and clean all them up and see what needs to be replaced and fixed and re-terminated 
And like this battery, this nut here, we're gonna actually, I'm gonna put a stainless steel nut on this. I don't like these uh, shouldered bolts or nuts on these. So we're just gonna hoik that right into the scrap bin. We'll put a stainless steel one on there and that should take care of that little problem. But we're gonna go through and we're gonna clean all of this stuff up. Let's pop these off. Oh, I hate these things. I hate these things. They're such a pain in the ass. Okay, so there is water in them. I'm gonna go ahead and probably try to get this pack to take a charge. That's just my my thing though. I like to do that. I like to really see if I can get these to charge up. I should have gloves on for this because it's an acid on top of the battery. Okay, but anyway, that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go through this, all this positive stuff over here. We're gonna hoik this over here. Negative stuff over here, we'll zip tie that stuff together so we don't lose what it is and see if we can actually get this little corner of batteries to come back to life. It's been almost a year since I uploaded a video. I'm sure a lot of you guys have noticed. The channel has grown significantly since my last upload. We're over, we're up at this point of shooting this video, we're almost at 9,500 subscribers. That's awesome, that's, that is huge. I can't believe you guys are actually subscribed to my channel, I love it. And I, I wanna take this opportunity to thank you. All right, so I'm gonna do something that I know is gonna bother the crap out of some of you. 9 16th socket on my little impact driver and I also have a half inch socket just in case. Sometimes there's half inch sockets or nuts on these, I don't know why. I like the 9 16 Just take them all apart. Ooh, that one wasn't even tight. And there was that one. Now you see that one's a little corroded, but that's normal. That 916s? Yeah, that's 916s. Okay. We don't have to take these bolts out yet because they're the battery hold downs. We don't need to remove those just yet. This is a magnetic dish, but they're not they're not sticking to it, so we know that they're definitely stainless. Okay, sometimes Trojan batteries have a lock washer on them. I'm not a fan of those myself, but see, these aren't that bad, some of them. Here, let's get this one. That's the main electrical negative. This is, this looks like factory. I don't even know. There's a, these wires are a mess. See, now this one, oh, look at this one. Look at that, see how that just broke off? That ring terminal just broke off of that cable. So this cable is gonna get replaced. Uh, I, th by the time I get done cutting, cutting it down, back to good metal where there's no corrosion, you know, absorbed into the wire, this wire is gonna be like that long. So I'm just gonna replace it. All right, so now I know this might seem counterintuitive to do this, but I am going to clean all of these batteries I want to see if I can bring these batteries back long enough where this guy can use this cart at least maybe for another couple of months before he can <clears throat> before we can get batteries for it. Right now batteries are getting are really hard to get. Everything is so hard to get. It's actually pretty annoying and frustrating. These things are cool, these little brushes. I've had a couple of people comment on the videos. They said, oh, you didn't clean the, the side of the post off. It's like, well, you don't have to. There's nothing connected there. Okay, so now I do have a battery cleaner that I, sp I would spray on all these. Um, not really going to right now. They don't really need it yet. I mean, they, they, they need to come back to life before we spray anything on them to clean them because if they're coming out, I don't want to waste that product. It, it is expensive. Well, there's water in that one. I'm not even gonna bother testing the specific gravity of these batteries yet. At least these ones here, ooh, this one stinks. That one stinks really bad, like rotten eggs. Sulfur, that's how you, that's one way you can tell a battery is kinda shit in the bed. Ooh, that one's, hmm, it stinks, but it's not as bad as this battery number two here. 
This is two. Do not like these fill systems. I have yet to find one that's worth a damn. Yeah, they, so far we're good on water. They all have water. Now, whatever is getting fed through this hose, I haven't a clue. I don't know if it's distilled water or tap water. I know there's some couple of people that have left comments on videos. They say, you can use tap water, it's fine. Go ahead. You can use whatever water you want. But if I sell you batteries and you use tap water and your battery fails in two years or three years and I send your battery out to get tested and they find that there's minerals in there and you have used uh, non-distilled water or you use tap water, then guess who's eating that cost? You, not me. These batteries all stink. They're actually bulging on their sides. It, when the battery case bulges like this, that usually means they're near the end of life because they're they're full of crap and the the plates are swelling or the insulators between the plates are swelling all right guys well it's the next day i kind of had to stop what i was doing went and called the customer told them what was going on and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to charge these three batteries up this one this one and this one we'll make a 24 volt battery pack and we'll hook that up to my battery charger, wherever that decided to disappear to. Uh, it is cold today. It is below freezing. It's windy. It's been snowing all day. It's kind of been a pretty sucky day today. So I got the heat going. You're going to hear that in the background. Apologize about the background noise, but I'm cold. So, all right, let's get this battery pack here. These three batteries connected in series. And then we're going to hook up our 24 volt battery charger to are positive and negative terminals. I put my sunglasses on. My sunglasses actually have safety glasses rated lenses in them, which is kind of nice. So what we're going to do is we have to clean these anyway, so I'm just going to clean them with the drill. So we went from like a corroded terminal, I don't know if you're able to see that, a corroded terminal like that, all kind of crappy, over to a, let's see, there we go, nice and shiny, nice and clean. You could also use warm water and baking soda. That will definitely clean these up. I like to personally get them down to the metal. Kind of like a, I don't know, it's a nice little brush thing. I like it. I don't even remember where I got these from. But I tell you what, I know I got a bunch of them. Okay. We don't have to worry about the water because we know that's good. Probably should have gloves on for this, uh, eh, whatever. We're gonna use this one over here, yeah. And uh, Robert's your mother's brother. have to clean this one. This is it. And that keeps biting my fingers. You could do this on a bench grinder that's got a wire wheel. Uh, you could use a pneumatic whiz wheel. You don't have to go and buy these things. You can use other items. I use them because I have them. I like them. They're great for cleaning these type of terminals though or battery posts. 
the uh, type that are on like the other style battery, like a golf cart battery, like a, or a gas car cart battery that has the uh, big fat terminal and no screw on the top. The this one works better. This one here. This is a nice one. It hooks onto a drill. You can use an impact though. A regular cordless drill or a corded drill works way better, in my opinion. Okay, now we're going to tighten all these down. We're going to use the impact driver. Not going to go nuts on it here. Just, just so they're not loose enough to create a problem. All right. So now, checking with our. our <coughs> Excuse me, our voltmeter. Ooh, I think it's time for new batteries on this thing. Let's crank this on. Range. Oop. Selection. Okay, it's on auto. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see that from there, but I just want to double check. Oh, look at that. We got 8.86 volts now that we've disconnected everything. Okay, so yesterday when I disconnected all these, we had negative voltage in each battery bat or battery here. Okay, so we got three, three point seven volts in that one. We got two. What the hell's going on here? We got almost two point nine volts in that one. and 2.3 volts in that one. So that's a promising sign. Normally when these batteries reverse polarity of themselves, they don't typically come back like that. So that's a very, that's a very good thing. That's a very good thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this charger up on this. Where is that charger? Uh-oh. Oh, here it is. I walked right by it. This is a 100% manual battery charger. Okay, this is not something you can just leave on and walk away from and forget about it because it will and it has cooked your batteries. There's our negative. I put these uh, big ass terminals or battery clamps on here because these are the only thing that have lasted as long as they have. All right, I also had to upgrade the amp meter and a whole bunch of stuff on the charger because the, the crap that they put in it just sucks. I put a digital meter in it. So it's now pushing out four amps at the output voltage is 30, 30 volts, but it is charging four amps. The voltage will drop as the amperage goes up. Uh, so I have to monitor that because I don't want to be pushing 70 amps into these three batteries because that will, it will boil them out and they will cook. So we don't want to do that. I want to get this to where it's pushing no more than 10 amps a battery. All right, so we're up to seven amps, 30 volts. Okay, so we got the battery charger hooked up. I'm gonna leave this run on here for a few hours and then I'll come back and we'll kind of do a voltage check and see what the voltage is on the battery pack. And I guess just take it from there and see what happens. It's been a few days. Uh, I wasn't gonna film all of the charging process stuff because I felt that that was a little redundant or boring, whatever. Uh, but I just want to let you know, we did charge these three batteries individually, or well, together as a battery pack, and they came back to life. They're pretty good. So let me show you that here. I'll show you the meter. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, so let me turn the monitor or the light on. Can you see that? Probably not. I'll just read it off to you here. So we're going to the cart main positive and the pack negative section here. We're at 25.1 volt 25.1 volts so that's good now i'm going to go positive here negative here we're at 22.47 volts okay so that means we are pretty close to what i think we're going to have a good cart so i have i've actually gone through and connected the entire battery pack back up everything's connected together so now we have a full 48 volt bank let's uh I, this wire here is only temporary I'm actually going to use this wire, cut these crappy ends off, and put my own ends on, crimped on, and we'll see what happens. So let's, let's actually see if we get anything out of this thing. Oh, there's a promising result. All right, let's see if it moves. Breaks off. 
Ooh, we got someone. Ooh, look at that. I don't know, you probably can't see it. Well, maybe you can. If you look over here, you can see the car's moving. So that's a great result. Now, what I haven't done yet is I haven't gone through each battery and individually tested their state of charge with the hydrometer, which I will do tomorrow. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually going to hook up the carts charger to verify it functions. So that way we can go, go back to the customer and say, okay, here we go. We have a charging battery pack. Your charger works the car operates. And then we'll talk about what we're gonna do. We're gonna clean up this wiring here because I don't know what it does, I don't know what it's for. So we have to figure out each circuit, figure out what they do, and then kinda basically take it from there. All right, so this is a club car charger. It's a Power Drive 3 charger. It looks like they uh, had it sent out and checked but we're gonna verify it. Okay, it's plugged in. It's working. These chargers are loud. You can see, it's working. We're gonna let it hum away. I'm gonna put the charger on the floor and then just let it do its thing. It's probably gonna take a solid 24 hours to completely charge. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna shut the camera off. We'll come back when it's done. Oh. I hear all the, I don't know if you can hear it. The batteries are sizzling. All right, so now we are quite a few days into this repair. Let's see here, let's get this out of the way. This battery stinks. Now, there's no guarantee that this battery is gonna be any good at all. Um, so what I do with this tool is I squeeze it. It fills up with, battery solution let's give it a little tap so it's just making sure everything's moving all right so we are at 1255 or 1.255 on that one 1.26 on that one and this is rinsed out with distilled water after every use. I'll oh, see this cell is pretty good here. 1.27. And the cells are not dirty. There's no cloudiness. Well, all right, maybe slightly cloudiness to the water. Or the batteries, the solution, I should say, not the water. Uh, 1.26 on that one. All right, so we have one cell that is in better shape than the rest of them. It probably wouldn't hurt to do like a desulfation or high frequency charge on these batteries. That would probably help them significantly, I'm assuming. So that battery's showing to be okay. So I'll do this battery here and then I'm gonna pause, unless, if, unless we see something. When 1.240, 1.255, this water's a little cloudy too. I don't know how old these batteries are, but they're looking like they're gonna be a need to be changed soon. 1.265, shake the bubbles off, 1.24. Okay, so you can see there's a wide, a little bit of a wide range in specific gravity on, these, on the cells of these batteries so far. That's gonna lead me to believe that the third battery in the pack is gonna be no different than these with the wide, wide range of readings. Though, I have to say, I'm very impressed that the battery pack even came back at all. I'm just making sure we don't have a dead cell. That's that's the whole idea of this, 1.26. Oh, I think the computer crashed. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's doing something. Windows is being stupid again. See, now this one's 1.28, so this cell is pretty good. And this is the problem when you let a battery go completely dead like this, or it's not being charged properly, you're gonna have a wide variance in cell condition. So, let's see, 1.265. And I'm kind of rounding to the nearest reading mark on this little tool. Hang on, there we go. Wait for it to come around, 1.25. All right, and I'm gonna go through the same process. I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna shut the camera off. Go through that same process with the other three batteries. Okay, let's inform the customer of our findings. I'm gonna actually replace this battery terminal and then our outer battery cable connections here, we're gonna, they're already clean. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spray them all down with uh, battery terminal protectant. I'm going to clean this one up a little bit better, get rid of that schmag there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be pretty much good to go as far as proceeding further. I am going to advise the customer. I think it would be a good idea to install a voltage reducer on this cart in order to spread out the load across the entire battery bank, as opposed to utilizing one, two, or three, four batteries. It, it just makes sense. And it's the best way to protect your battery bank from like we have experienced here, a, di a discharge, a deeper discharge on one half of the battery bank as opposed to the other. So now we have an out of balance battery bank. So let's do that. And then uh, once we get moving forward with this, with the voltage reducer, we'll pick up the video from there. All right, guys. Well, I kind of forgot to record the rest of what I did on this cart. So I'll kind of just go over it with you. Um, we got the batteries all charged up. Everything seems to, oh, look at how dark that is. Hold on a second. All right, so let's try that. Okay, so it's still a little dark, but that's fine. Just have to deal with it. So we got all the batteries charged up. I got all of the cable ends, the terminals clean. The battery posts are clean. I have terminal protectant sprayed on each battery terminal. I shortened up this wire like I said I was going to do. I built the new wire from scratch. Uh, we have the voltage regulator, I'm sorry, voltage reducer and fuse block installed. You can see right here. All right, so let's hold the light and try that over. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to point because I'm holding the light with my hands. So here we go. All right, so you can see we got the, uh, the fuse block installed. Now that comes directly off of the voltage reducer, which is mounted on the front of the cart. This has the controller and all the onboard computer stuff back in there. So there's really not much room to add a voltage reducer unless you were to, I don't know, use a different style voltage reducer or whatever. But I used a, a 20 amp switched 24 to 60 volt one that allows me to utilize the entire battery pack, which is nice. But on all these batteries, I got every terminal and every battery cable clean and re-terminated the ones that needed it. I shortened up that wire there between the two half packs. That's done. All of the wiring that was in here for the lighting, I figured it all out, got it all routed and cleaned up. So it's all kind of bunched up down in there now, but it's it looks a lot worse than it actually is. Uh, the black, I'm sorry, the white and red wires coming up. You see that goes over to negative and then the red over to positive. Those are the wires that go down and under and back to or forward to the voltage reducer. Let's go take a look at that, which also turns on and off with the key switch. There's all the extra crap that was on the wiring harnesses. All right, so let's go take a look at that. So under the front of the cart here, you can see we got the voltage reducer mounted right there. It's kind of hard to get in here with the camera, but yeah, we got it mounted there. That was the only place I could install it that I could actually get to with the drill to mount the, um, the box itself. All the wires are loomed and they run under the cart and we got a hole drilled in the frame that allows us to route them up into the battery bucket. Apologize, I didn't get any video on that. This one here, I just really wanted to get it in and get it done because I still have a bunch out there yet that need to come in and get worked on. So that's gonna be it for this video. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you already haven't, if you enjoy this content. Hit the like button, ring that bell so you're notified anytime I upload videos to the channel. And until next time, as always, we will see you in the next video.